When you clicked on this video, you are probably already aware of the fact that blockchain technologies like the one Bitcoin uses are very difficult to scale. Being a data scientist, I want to share with you my thoughts about the scalability properties of blockchain technologies. However, I want to start with a dialogue that I have experienced several times in the past and you also might have experienced this one. You know, size matters, so bigger blocks allow more transactions to scale Bitcoin. Um, yes, but you won't be able to store 40,000 transactions per second in Bitcoin blocks. So don't, don't lecture me with your centralized lightning network. Um, it's not centralized, it actually works quite well because it's second layer, it's you know. It's insecure and you need to trust central hubs to forward your money. No, the HTLCs actually make use of the blockchain to provide a trustless protocol. It's quite simple. So I need even more transactions and spam the blockchain to open and close my stupid payment channels? Um, yeah, kind of, but once you have them, you can reuse them all the time. And when I want to withdraw money, I need to wait again for slow block confirmations. No, you could just pay someone an invoice on the Lightning Network or use a decentralized exchange. Don't you, you know? get it, Satoshi's vision bigger blocks. I talk like against the wall. You're like one of those Vim guys. No, I talk against the wall. And yes, Vim is awesome. Um, Emacs is actually better. No, Vim. Um, Emacs is Vim, 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 Vim. Emacs, Emacs, Emacs. Pointless. <laughs> Amen is the only thing I can say to religious battles like this. In order to have a less religious conversation, let's start to look at the scalability properties of blockchain technologies. I will start with a Wikipedia article about scalability. When you read this article, you will realize that many people have a very different understanding of the term scalability. However, there seems to be some consensus about a certain definition of it. So let's look at the definition of scalability. The definition says that scalability is the capability of a system to handle a growing amount of work or its potential to be enlarged to accommodate that growth. So what would be the growing amount of work in the Bitcoin network? You might think of proof of work, but I think in the case of scaling the Bitcoin network, we should consider the term work to be the amount of transactions that can be processed and stored per second. Currently, we can process about seven transactions per second in the Bitcoin blockchain. How could we scale this? By adding more computational resources, we see that this doesn't work because the difficulty algorithm will just be adjusted and still lead to seven transactions to be stored per second. However, we could adjust the protocol to leave out the difficulty adjustment. In this way, we would have a faster block generation. This is also equivalent to just increase the block size. In particular, we see that when we double the block size, we also double the amount of transactions we can process per second. This approach is exactly exactly the one that the Bitcoin Cash community is taking. And when you compare this to the definition of scalability, it actually seems to work quite well. We increase the blocks and by this we can compute more work. While this approach theoretically scales, in reality we run into a couple of problems which I want to explain for the reminder of this video. The biggest one is actually that it is impractical to increase the block size to the required size. You don't believe me because you're a B-cacher or you already have your opinion? Well, let's look together at the numbers because I personally think they're really quite convincing. And you know, numbers will never ever lie. So a low estimate would state that Bitcoin needs to store not only 7 transactions per second, but maybe 10,000 times that much, so 70,000 transactions per second. This would require to increase the block size to 10 gigabyte which by the way is 1.4 terabyte per day. Now the important thing to realize is that since Bitcoin is supposed to be a decentralized system, every participant of the network needs to be able to verify the entire blockchain. In order to do so, we need to be able to verify blocks faster than they're coming in. Are we actually able to verify blocks that fast if they are 10 gigabytes in size? So my desktop computer at home took about one week to verify 200 gigabyte of current blockchain data. Currently we have a little bit more than 500,000 blocks and when we divide this by seven, because I needed seven days, it was something like 77,000 blocks which I could verify in one day. We're talking about one megabyte blocks here. Dividing this number by 24, I was able to verify about 3,200 blocks. And when I divide this again by six, in order to know how many blocks I was able to verify per block time, I was able to verify 539 blocks in 10 minutes. Okay, and this is the really important part. What this means that with my hardware, I can only increase the block size to 539 megabyte. Everything beyond that would mean that I couldn't catch up verifying blocks. And 539 megabytes for a block means 4,000 transactions per second. And that's probably not enough. 
And just for the nerds, if we go with 10 gigabyte blocks, we need about eight hours to verify one block. Let's assume I would finish my argument here. I would be pretty sure that uh, many people would come and say, yeah, but if we really run into the system, you should not verify your blocks with commodity hardware, but maybe with uh, ASICs. And then you could verify many more hashes per second, and then you could verify larger blocks. That is true. But we run also into other problems. So again, let's crunch some numbers. And you know, numbers will never ever lie. Assuming a 100 megabit internet connection, I would need 800 seconds to download a 10 gigabyte block. That is 200 seconds more than it takes to generate the next one in order to download the next one. Now you could argue that the internet connection speed might also increase in future, but then we could look at an economical argument. Currently one gigabyte of internet traffic costs about 3 cents, at least that's the cheapest price that I could find. This would mean 30 cents per block and with 144 blocks per day, 43 euros, or in a month about 1300 euros. And I have not included the costs for all the hard drives that I would need to buy all the time and the electricity to run all these hard drives. I don't think that the majority of users would be willing to pay 1300 euros per month or even more, in order to participate to this system. So then only people that have specialized hardware and huge data centers are able to participate the system. So while this might work in those specialized data centers with specialized hardware, at least it doesn't sound so decentralized to me anymore. As with web architectures, there is usually a better way to scale a system rather than adding pure force to it. In our case, adding pure force was increasing the block size. And the better way to scale the system is the Lightning Network. As the video is already quite long, I will only explain the Lightning Network on a very high level. However, the good news is that in future videos I will state way more details about how the Lightning Network works, so make sure to subscribe my channel and follow me on Twitter in order to get these updates. Actually, if you don't want to wait, you might want to check out my channel because I already have put out quite some videos explaining this amazing new technology. The core component of the Lightning Network is the construction of a payment channel, which is basically a two out of two multi-signature wallet. And those payment channels enable people to do end-to-end -end Bitcoin transactions over these payment channels, which are backed by the blockchain, but don't need to be stored on the blockchain anymore. This is really great because before the blockchain was the bottleneck of this entire Bitcoin system and now we kind of got rid of this. The second ingredient of the Lightning Network is that we can combine the payment channels in order to form a network of payment channels, the so-called Lightning Network. It is a second layer solution on top of the Bitcoin protocol, but by the end of the day it all boils down to pure Bitcoin and just a creative way of using the Bitcoin protocol. In my last video, which you can check out by clicking on this link, you can see that I have already benchmarked a payment channel and demonstrated that one payment channel allows two users to send more transactions among each others than they would ever have to do in everyday life situations. Since everyone can have a payment channel, this means that the system actually scales. Not only does it scale, but it scales much nicer than increasing the block size. Now many people will bash the Lightning Network and state that it still has many flaws and doesn't work as reliable as the Bitcoin network. And I have to admit, currently this is quite true. But the Lightning Network is a very new invention and the software is still out in beta status. Many of those problems are already at least theoretically solved and sometimes even test implementations exist. Next month there will be 20 developers from around the world gathering together in Australia in order to discuss the future protocol development of the Lightning Network protocol. And I am very happy that I am able to join this group and help drafting the future protocol definition. And this future protocol definition, which is called BOLT11, and BOLT stands for Basic of Lightning Technologies. BOLT11 is supposed to address and solve all the problems that we currently know exist with the Lightning Network, so that in future we can actually really use this technology as a robust way of quick and fast payments and in order to scale Bitcoin and the Bitcoin blockchain. Another criticism of the Lightning Network is a little bit more of fundamental nature. If you do the math, you will realize that with one megabyte blocks, you will hardly be able to offer any person in the world to open several payment channels. So at some point in time, we actually really need to increase the block size um, or use other technologies like sidechains. 
However, one thing is really important when you talk about scaling an architecture. It usually makes a lot of sense to first scale the system and design the system in a proper way before we start uh, increasing the performance by adding force, so in our case uh, increasing the block size. Thanks for watching this video until this point and being interested in this topic. Um, I want to do a really big thank you to the Lightning Makers community for reading some of my scripts before I created the video. And I also want to thank a few people like Jeff from Fulmo who is sponsoring me, but also Chaincode Labs who are inviting me to the New York City Lightning Network residency by the end of this month. And a thank for helping me to travel to Australia for the Bolt 1-1 meeting. If you want to help me and support my work, I have a Bitcoin donation address in the description of this video, also a link to my Lightning note. But you could also help me by giving me valuable feedback here in the comments or by sharing this video. I hope that I will be able to talk to you again next week and until then, I wish you happy lightning hacking.